admit that I didn't really love the book of Acts until we got started uh, reading it and discussing things that were in it. But now, uh, being that we're hopping around in chapter 10, examining it line by line, I can say, man, I really love this book. Oh, oh, and I wanted to tell you, not only do I encourage you to read the book of Acts out loud at one sitting, I thought I'd take it up to the next level because one of the sisters left a comment that she was going to click on a software program and have the AI, the whatever the AI is, you know, the intelligence, la 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 la, la read it out loud to her. <laughs> artificial intelligence, that's what it is. Have the artificial intelligence read it out loud to her. And I thought, mm -mm -mm, no, 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 you've got to read it out loud to yourself because, number one, your eyes are getting it. Number two, your brain is processing it because it has to, you know, work its way through to the mouth. You're reading it out loud so your ears can hear it. So I'll take it up even to the next level and, and challenge you, dear reader, dear listener, dear friend, take the book of Acts and write it out word by word, paragraph, period, commas, everything. Write it out by hand in your own handwriting because it'll get deeper into your soul. You'll see things when you write it out by hand that you could never see by just glancing at it, just reading it silently, just even reading it out loud to yourself. You, you, by writing it out by hand or typing it if you insist, there's there's one more advantage I was thinking about. You know, we don't we don't have we don't have any guarantees that the internet is going to be around forever. And and Paul's letters originally came to us because they were written out by hand, and that seems to be a more permanent way of long-term communication than the silly internet we know today, which is very dependent on many complex things. And complex societies and complex systems can only last so long before you add one more complexity to it, and then it tends to fall apart. Okay, Acts chapter 10. We were supposed to start at verse 36. However, we're going to back up a little bit and, and see where we are. Verse 34. Now Peter, opening his mouth, said, Of a truth, I am grasping that God is not partial. Hey! Baptist ministers, do you hear this? God is not partial. Verse 35. But in every nation he who is fearing him and acting righteously is acceptable to him. That's a great improvement over Baptist and Catholic theology on who is and is not acceptable to God. Okay. So here's where we're supposed to begin. Acts chapter 10, verse 36, and I'll call it even Peter says he is Lord of all. Verse 36, and, and he continues, Peter continues, Of the word he dispatches to the sons of Israel, bringing the evangel of peace through Jesus Christ, he is the Lord of all. You are aware the declaration coming to be down the whole of Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism, which John heralds, Jesus from Nazareth, as God anoints him with Holy Spirit and power, who passes through as a benefactor and healer of all those who were tyrannized over by the adversary, for God was with him. Now, I put this in red because do you see any transactional deals in this passage, in this sentence? You know, like, if you do this, I will do that? No. Look at this. This is all about the work of God in the, cross, in the cross of Christ. He passes through as a benefactor and healer of all who are tyrannized. It doesn't say of all who will cooperate and say the sinner's prayer and live a holy life. He is the benefactor and healer of all those who are tyrannized over by the adversary. For God was with Christ. For God was with him. We are all witnesses of all that he does. 
this is Peter talking. When he says we, I assume he's talking about we, the disciples in Jerusalem. We're all witnesses of, witnesses of all that he does, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they also assassinate, hanging him on a pole. We witnessed all that he does, and they assassinate him, hanging him on a pole. Verse 40, oh my God, can you see why I've begun to really love the book of Acts? Verse 40, this one God rouses the third day and gives him to become disclosed, not to the entire people, but to witnesses who have been selected before by God. Get it? God is not in any big hurry to finish up his Aeonian purpose. He's not in any big hurry to make everything perfect. No. He discloses the truth, not to the entire people, but to witnesses who have been selected before by God. To us who drank, who ate and drank together with him, after his rising from among the dead. So it was not disclosed to everybody and not everybody to this day gets it. They're not supposed to get it. Paul in 2 Thessalonians says, not for all is the faith. Not for all is the faith. So God will bring all along. He will reconcile all, vivify all, justify all, but it's not going to happen just yet. Hang on. Verse 42. And he charges us to herald to the people and by and to certify that this one is he who is specified by God to judge, to be the judge of the living and the dead. Let's go over that again. 42. And he charges us to herald to the people and to certify that this one is he who is specified by God to be judge of the living and the dead. Oh, aren't we so grateful that this one who they hanged on a pole, he's going to be the judge of the living and the dead. And it's the same guy who said, forgive them, they know not what they do. So is God going to honor Jesus' prayer, he tells us to make to pray and that he would answer our prayers. And here's the, the Son of God on the pole saying and praying, God forgive them. They know not what they do. I'm betting God's going to forgive them because now the same guy who made that prayer is the judge, is going to be the judge of the living and the dead. 43, to this one are all the prophets testifying. Wow. You see how this takes a deep understanding to look at all the prophets of the Old Testament and realize that they were actually prophesying about Christ. 43 again. Everyone who is believing on him is to obtain the pardon of sins through his name. That's just the beginning. Peter didn't know anything about the justification of all. And if you have justification, you can find out about that in in um, Romans chapter 5, that, that the justification of all comes through the work of the cross. Five. Look at 18 and 19, verses 18 and 19 of chapter 5. But Peter doesn't see the big picture here. He's still a Jew. He still thinks that God is the God of Israel and not much more. He, although he's just, he's getting it. He says he's the Lord of all. Now, Everyone who is believing in him is to obtain the pardon of sins through his name. Well, the Jews do obtain pardon of sins. We do not need pardon of sins. Paul tells us that we don't need pardon of sins. We're justified in Christ. And there is a big difference between pardon and justification. If you're justified, that means you didn't even do anything wrong. You know, like, like if you killed this man named Fred, and you can prove in court that Fred was going to blow up the entire state of New York, well, then you're actions are justified and in, in 5 18 and 19 it talks about the justification of life itself Ooh, man we got to explore that sometime the justification of life this is a big work that God is doing anyway so 
at least at least Peter is seeing something here and we'll call it the uh, pardon of sins through his name mostly to the Jews okay so while Peter is still speaking these declarations the Holy Spirit falls on all those who are hearing the word and amazed were the believers of the circumcision oh the believers of the circumcision Luke wrote this and Luke hung out with Paul a lot and if this book of Acts were just a Jewish thing this phrase would never even be in the book of Acts and amazed were the believers of the circumcision well that's implying that there are also now believers of the uncircumcision and Cornelius is uh, and his family and his uh, all of his intimate friends are among the uncircumcision so anyway so we're, we're getting closer to the good news for all okay and amazed were the believers of the circumcision who ever come together with Peter seeing that all in the nations also the gratuity of the Holy Spirit has been poured out for they heard them speak in languages and magnify God okay we'll stop there for now pick it up at 47 and grace to you go ahead and like and leave any silly comment you want because silly is good